I have a lot of questions about space and I'm sure you guys do too. I'd really like to get to know more about like how hot are the stars and questions like that. So let's go ask my friend, Dr. Sterner, since he's an expert in astronomy. Hi friends. So I'm very excited to do our Ask an Expert interview with Dr. Sterner from the University of Montevallo. Hi, Dr. Sterner. Hi, Jekka. Hello, kids. <laughs> how are you today? So my first question is, what do you teach at the university? I'm a mathematics professor here at the university and um, the director of the mathematics program. Uh, my area of expertise is uh, complex analysis and uh, I'm also the director of the James Wiley Shepherd Observatory. So my first question, since you're an expert in astronomy, is how hot are the stars? Well, that's a question of color or spectral class. You know, if you heat up a piece of metal, for example, it'll start glowing red. And if you keep heating it up, it turns orange and then it turns yellow. And a lot of metals will start to melt when you hit that temperature. But you get the idea that um, these colors roughly correspond to spectral classes, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Our sun would be about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, then as you head toward the, the bluer stars and the violet stars, then they can be as high as uh, 100,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And those are surface temperatures. So at the core, uh, inside the star, it can be hundreds of millions of degrees, just like at the center of an atomic bomb. Wow, that is impressive. So my next question is, why is the sky black in space, but blue here on Earth? Okay, so the sky usually, by that you mean the atmosphere. Uh, so there is no atmosphere in space. And uh, so it's black. So why is the sky blue and not black like it should be? Um, so we just talked about uh, wavelengths of light. So uh, uh, toward the blue end, so let's see, we said red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, right? So uh, as, you, as you go toward the, uh, the blue end, the frequency gets higher, the wavelength, the wavelength gets shorter. So blue light, blue, indigo, violet, that's just about the right size. The wavelength of the light is the right size to be scattered by the molecules in the atmosphere. And uh, so uh, when you look at the sky, uh, it's bluest if you look straight up. Uh, and then the light is traveling through a lot more uh, when you look more toward the horizon. So the blue se seems to fade as you go toward the horizon. Um, now the cones in our eyes that allow us to see color, they're more sensitive to blue. And the next time you see a rainbow, uh, you could try that. You know, uh, we have cones that register red well and green and blue. Uh, so if you look at the rainbow, you'll see red, orange, yellow, green, blue. But will you see the indigo and the violet? Try it next time. It's very difficult uh, for the human eye to perceive those colors. So it's the same reason that uh, uh, deep water is blue, for example. So the, uh, the, the blue light is, is scattered by the molecules and bounces around. That is so cool. I'm definitely going to try that rainbow trick to see how many colors I can see. So this question is a great one. Is it true that some of the stars in the night sky are not actually stars, but are galaxies? That's true. Um, you, you'd need a telescope to, to see most of them, um, but there is one galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy, that's visible to the naked eye, and it's in 
the constellation Andromeda, which is where it gets its name. Uh, and it's um, a spiral galaxy, uh, and it's uh, two and a half million light years away from us. So that's the furthest object that the human eye can see. Uh, everything else that you see in the sky, there are things in our, uh, our galaxy, the Milky Way. But when you uh, see the Andromeda galaxy, you can see it's not quite a, a point, but a little bit smeared out. And uh, so when you look at that uh, uh, galaxy, you're actually looking uh, not only in the deep distance of space, but you're looking back in time. So it's two and a half million light years away. A light year is the distance that light travels in one year. So you're seeing that uh, galaxy as it appeared two and a half million years ago. So you're looking into the distant past. So to give you an idea, one light year is about six trillion miles. Um, and that's why we measure those distances in light years, because after a while, if you measure in some teeny little length like miles, it just, the numbers get way too big. That is so cool. So that galaxy is also like in the past, but we can see it. And it's the only galaxy that we can see with the naked eye. So my next question is, how far can a rocket go? Well, that's kind of a trick question because um, a, uh, if, let's say I, I have a rocket and uh, in space, and uh, I just give it a shove. Well, according to Isaac Newton, that will just go forever. <laughs> yeah, unless it's acted upon by some force. Now, uh, whoever asked the question was probably wondering, well, what if it's on Earth? Now it's overcoming an immense uh, gravitational field. And so, um, you know, the rocket has to attain a speed of 25,000 miles per hour uh, to escape that gravitational field. And then the, the, the um, you know, it's, the moon, I guess, is about one-sixth the gravity of the Earth. So it, you notice with the Apollo missions to the moon, um, there were these great big rockets stacked on, on top of each other. And then this tiny little capsule on the top. So those big rockets were to get everything off the Earth and to the moon. And that little thing is what they flew back from the moon, right? Because, uh, you know, it's uh, not so hard to get away from the moon, but very hard to get away from the Earth. Well, I did not realize it took so much force. But also, it's like once you get into space, technically you could go on forever as long as you don't run into anything, right? Yes, there's that too. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule this summer to meet with us and answer our questions. I sure learned a lot, and I'm sure that our uh, viewers also did too. You're very welcome, and it's a pleasure to speak with you. Everybody have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Wow, thank you, Dr. Sterner, for all of those interesting facts. Uh, that really answered a lot of my questions, and I hope it answered yours, too. So thanks for joining me today, guys. I can't wait to see you guys next time when we are talking about our next theme in our book. If you haven't signed up yet, register on our webpage to get your free booklet and follow along with us.